Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down, Lord, in this place. We surrender to you, God, Lord, right now in this moment, it all belongs to you. We're not taking anything for ourselves, we give it all. I greet you in the name that is above all other name. The name that has power to save. The name that has power to deliver. The name that but at the very mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess his lordship. My name is Pastor Dwayne Dyer. I'm here with Restorers of the Breach to lead you into the presence of the Lord this morning. Would you open up your hearts to join in and receive with us? Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for saturating this place. We thank you, O oh God, for opening up the airwaves, O oh Lord God. We thank you, O oh God, for making the place, O oh God, this place, O oh God, conducive for your presence, Lord. May it be acceptable, O oh God. May it come up to you as a sweet, sweet smell, Lord, as we burn our incense of worship before you, Lord God. Let it come before you, God, 
as a sweet aroma. May you incline your ear to our voices, Lord. And may you open up a window of heaven. And may you pour out, oh God, upon your people. We pray, oh God, that your presence would be with us all over the earth as your kingdom worship you, Lord. Let there be no hindrance. Let there be no distractions. As we bow and surrender before you, Lord. Let your presence fill this place, Lord.
Say nobody. Miracles happen. Yes, you are. 
center of it all just say at the center at the center of it all it's you it's you that I see oh Jesus it's you that I see we worship with the angels as they sing this morning at the center of it all it's you that I see oh Jesus it's you that I see at the center of it all, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, oh Jesus, at the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Sing it again at the center of it all. Say at the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see, Lord. It's you that I see. Now I want you to visualize. Sing it at the center. Say. At the center of At the center of your situation, at the center of your problem. It's you that I see. It's God alone that we see. It's you that I see. And he's going to yeah. surround us with his angels as they sing with us and say, Hey, at the center of it all. Yes, Lord. It's you that I see. Oh. It's you that I see. Even though they placed us in the midst of the fire at the center, say, at the center of it at the center of the fire, it's you that I see, at the center of the burning, it's you that I see, yeah. Oh, yeah. at the center of it everything. It's you that I see. Just place it as his feet. Don't look at your situations anymore. Don't look at the problems anymore. They are distractions. Just, I want you to just see him. Clothed in glory. Yes, Clothed in his splendor. Holding the universe in his hand. Placing his feet upon the earth. He is in charge. My God, you are, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are great. Greater than the greatest, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. Say, you are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher. 
were great, bigger than the big. You were stronger, you were stronger, stronger than the strongest. You were higher, you were higher, higher than the highest. You are, you are greater, greater than the greatest. Inside, Lord, from the inside, be God, 
Him all over this place. Oh, oh, let him hear your voice. Hallelujah. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. Hallelujah. Let him hear your voice. <laughs> let him hear your voice. of his garment and I pray as you reach forth and stretch that's why we lift our hands that's why we surrender that's why we bow down in worship so as we reach forth and touch just but the presence of the Lord we know that we will be made whole yes Jesus that this broken vessel could be mended. That this empty vessel could be filled. That he could renew. That he could restore. That he could make again. He can make again. He can make again. It doesn't matter how damaged you are. He can make again. Oh, my God is the fixer. 
He can restore you better than anything or anyone. He can restore you. Doesn't matter where you are, what you did, where you've been, He can fix it. He can fix it. <laughs> he can fix it. Try Jesus. Try Yahweh, Father. Try Yeshua. Try. Try my Jehovah Shama. Try my Jehovah Rafa. Try my Jehovah Mekadesh. Try my Jehovah Nisi. Try my Jehovah Sikonu. Rena my Yedodobosia Yekoda Yeshe. Try my Jesus. Would you try, my Jesus? He can take the little you have. But you got to surrender the little you have. Oh. Taste and see. God is good. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of yesterday. He's the God of today. He's the God forevermore. I don't care what they say. He came for you. There's no difference in his love. There's no difference in his love. He loves us all the same. Oh. Where are your accusers? Oh. He loves us all the same. Where are your accusers? Oh, he loves us all the same. Where are your accusers? He loves us all the same. Where are your accusers? He loves us all the same. Where are your accusers? He loves us all. That's why you need to take your eyes off of men. Just take your eyes off of men. Man can fail. Man can fail. But my God, he never fails. He never disappoints. He's never too late. He's never too late. He's never too late. He's never too late. He's never, oh, you might want it now, but my God is never too late. He's never too late. He's never too late. Never too late. He is faithful until the end. That's why he told us to endure. 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 Your reward is sure once you endure. I need some people to endure. In this season right now, endure. In this season right now, press. He is with you in the midst of the fire. He is with you in the midst of the what fire. What fire, what fire, he is the God of the fire, what fire, 
What fire He is the God of the fire. Oh, get your dancing clothes on. Get your Get your dancing clothes on. Dance in the midst of your fire. What fire? What fire? What storm? He is the God of the storm. What storm? Even the wind and the wave obey his voice. What storm? He's the God who tell Peter, step forth, step out of the boat, step out of the boat, step out of the boat, step out of the boat. Go! Jesus. with you. Oh, somebody needs to know this. Zayda, with you. I'm more than those against you. Why are you worrying? He said, one shall put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. Say that I'm with you. Don't you see the angels that encamp around you? Can you see as they stand waiting for instructions? They're getting ready to march forth on your behalf. You ain't got to lift a finger. You don't got to lift a finger. You ain't got to lift a finger. They are ready to march forth on your behalf. You ain't got to lift a finger. You ain't got to lift a finger. You ain't got to lift a finger. They are ready. Thank you for this moment, Lord, that I can give it all to you. I don't know if I will have tomorrow, but I know in this moment, Lord, 
I'm giving it all to you, God. Wash us in your blood, Lord. Wash us in your blood. Wash us in your blood, Jesus. It's a joy, it's an honor this morning to be able to wish you, all the fathers out there, a happy Father's Day. Coming from Restorers of the Breach Ministries and all the leaders, all the workers, everyone, we just want to extend a happy Father's Day to you. We love you. I pray that God would continue to bless and empower you, fathers. May his presence continue to be with you. May the Spirit of the Lord continue to guide you as fathers. As you lead your home, as you lead your children, as you father your children. I pray that God will give you the wisdom and the understanding. And the call that you are the head of the home. And for, the, for those that, that, that lost their, their fathers through death, I pray that God will continue to extend His fatherly love to you. That you will lack nothing. Oh, you would lack nothing. I pray that on this Father's Day that you are truly blessed and that you are empowered. My name is Pastor Dwayne Dyer, and it's an honor for me to now introduce to you the mighty woman of God, my wife, Pastor Prophetess Josan Alabi Dyer. Let's welcome her as she comes. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Something's got to break. Something's got to break. Break it up, God. Break it up, God. Break it up, God. Something's got to break. Something's got to break. Open up your mouth. Maybe you just saw that dance you were ministered to while you were in your living room. Open up your mouth. Begin to holler. Begin to shout. Begin to say, God, let it break. Let it break. Let it break in my atmosphere. Let it break in my house. Let it break in my marriage. Let it break in my home. Let it break in my life. Let it break on my job. Let it break in my marriage. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Whatever been holding me back. Whatever been holding me down let it break let it break let it break and the chains of depression break 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 God Lord we declare in this atmosphere chains are breaking yokes are broken in the name of Jesus we declare this atmosphere is become conducive for the move of the Holy Spirit oh God where chains are falling off chains are being broken we set this atmosphere for impact and contact in the name of Jesus may you stand with fire 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 of the Holy Ghost God set this atmosphere God let your angels surround God let your fire come down, God. As you break up, God, everything that have come in our way, everything that came to hold us back, everything that came to cause us to stop, everything that came to slow us down, everything that came to deviate the course, every detour, every obstruction. Oh, God, let your fire burn. Let your fire burn. Oh, let your fire burn. 
Everything, oh God, Lord, that the enemy uh, set in our way, uh, loosed in our way, uh, said you will go no further, you will come no further, you will speak no further. Burn it up, God. Burn it up, God. May your fire burn. Burn. Everything, oh God, Lord, that came in our marriage uh, and said you won't have, uh, you came too far. It's time to turn back now. Uh, guess is it, this is it for you. Uh, it's time to sign the papers. It's time to walk away. Burn it up, God. Burn it up. Burn it up, God. Father, Lord God, everything that came in, uh, that came in the church, uh, that came around the church, uh, that came to shut your people up, uh, that came to suffocate your people, that came to bury people, that came to degrade some people, that came to bury your ministers, that came to bury people. Oh God, burn it up. Burn it up, God. Burn it up, God. Burn it up. Father, Lord God, we set our eyes on you this morning, God. As you break in this atmosphere, as you break what needs to be broken, and you keep what needs to be kept. Oh, Lord God, we stand on the solid rock. And oh, God, Lord, your church is unmovable. Your church is unshakable. You said on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Father, we thank you for the power, the resurrection power, the dunamis power that you have unleashed to your apostles, that you have unleashed to your bishops that you have unleashed to your pastors, that you have unleashed to your servants. May we, oh God, walk before you faithfully, yes. As you burn it up, God, everything that have come, God, to stop the plan, to stop your move, God, burn it up, God. Let your consuming fire, consuming fire, burn it up, God. This morning, I greet you in the most precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. That name is Jesus Christ. There is no other name. I can come before you uh, and tell you that it supersedes all the rest. Uh, but the name of Jesus, his name is Yahweh. Uh, his name is Yahweh. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, his name is Lord of Lords uh, and King of Kings. Uh, at the mention of his name, uh, demons still tremble. Demons are still disturbed. Uh, we will never stop saying that name uh, because that name is all powerful. Uh, his power is still on the earth today, uh, moving through you and I. So that name is the name we call upon because the word of God tells us there is no other name by which a man can call upon and be saved but through the name of Jesus. Whatever other name you're calling upon, it won't work. If you're calling upon man's name, it won't work. There's only one name you can call upon. Call him in trouble. Call him in trouble. Call him in trouble. He's going to show up. Call him in the water. Call him in the river. Call him in the fire, he's gonna show up. Oh, there is a name. Somebody, what is his name? What is his name? What is his name? Fresh fire. 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 What is his name? Let the fresh fire of God baptize you, baptize you in the anointing of God. Oh, there is no other name. Somebody say that name. Somebody shout that name. Somebody jump with that name. Somebody run with that name. Somebody dance with that name. Somebody begin to shout, Jesus. What are you carrying? Tell me that name, Jesus. What's on the inside, Jesus. Yes. Oh, where would I have been, God, if it hadn't been for you? Where would I have been 
had it not been for Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you folks today, it would have been no way good because when Christ found me, I was lost. I was gone. I had a depraved mind. I was full of anger. I was full of hatred. I didn't know how to forgive people. I was bitter. I was resentful. My God, I felt hated. I felt like the black sheep in my family. I felt like I was a nobody for a long time. But then Jesus stepped in. Oh, I don't know who you are, but you just tuned in this morning. And I've come by to tell you Jesus is about to step in. He's about to step in in the midst of the melee. He's about to step in in the midst of the accusation. He's about to step in in all the foul words spoken over you. He's about to step in in the day of trouble. He's about to step in in the prison cell. He's about to step in in your son's life. He's about to step in in your daughter's life. I prophesy unto you, their eyes are becoming open. The ears are becoming open in the name of Jesus. Do not fear, for Jesus is on the scene. Oh, and he's right there. He's in you and I. He said if we would accept him as our Lord and Savior. He said if you abide in me and I abide in you, you would ask what you will and it shall be done. I want to tell you he's right in your home today. He's right in your heart. He's right in your life. And if you don't have him, invite him in. He wants to come in. He said he will knock at the door. And if any man open it, he would come in. Knock, 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 knock today, Jesus. Jesus, knock on the hands of men. Knock all over the world today through this sermon. And may they open up and let you in. My name is Pastor Joe Zendaya. And I bring you the word of God. And I bring you the word of God today from Haggai chapter 2. A word God has explicitly uh, placed in my spirit. And this word today is for the church. This word today is for the united church. The body of Christ. And it's called entitled this sermon today, The Unstoppable Church. And I want to read for you today from Haggai chapter 2. Reading from verse 5 to verse 9 from the King James Version and it says according to the word that I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt church so my spirit remaineth among you fear ye not for thus saith the Lord of hosts yet once it is a little while I will shake the heavens I will shake the earth I will shake the sea and I will shake the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come Come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. I entitle this word today for you and I, the unstoppable church my god god is about to release some stuff into this atmosphere get your notepads as we begin to understand who is the unstoppable church what is the unstoppable church how do we become the unstoppable church today I must say happy father's day to all the fathers of the house Restorers, and by extension, I have so much other fathers. I must say a pleasant, pleasant, pleasant good morning and happy Father's Day. I have spiritual fathers all around the world that I must say happy Father's Day to. They have not been physical fathers to me, but spiritual fathers right here on the island of Tobago in Trinidad. Very special men of God in my life and mentors that were a part of my ministerial life. I say happy Father's Day to some great men of God, great, great men of God. Also my father, a, a great man. I also want to say happy Father's Day most of all in this room today to my dear husband, Pastor Dwayne Dyer. He has been there. Uh, uh, he has been, uh, you know, a major part in my life. And I really thank God for his presence. I thank God for having him alive in the land of the living. Amen. I want to say a special happy Father's Day to all the leaders of the house and 
or the ministerial leaders of the house, those who bring the word, those who feed the flock of restorers, and those who work very hard in this ministry. Happy, happy Father's Day. And I want to say happy Father's Day by extension to all the fathers of Trinidad, Tobago, and internationally who are viewing at whatever time. Happy Father's Day. May this word bless you. It's for all of us this morning. May God bless you right where you are. Today as I speak to you, let me relate to you what God said to me prophetically for you today as the bride. God will major on your minor. I'm going to say that again. And Brother Drew, I need you to really run with me today because I cannot run. <laughs> so God is going to major on your minor. I want you to tell somebody who's around you sitting in that room with you today, God is about to major on what's your minor. Church, God is about to major on what they call our minor. Oh, let me speak to the church for a moment. Uh, your ladder will be greater than your former. Let me address the restorer's family. Uh, your ladder will be greater than your former. Now let me address the universal church. Uh, your ladder would be greater than your former. Now let me address you, the church, individually. Your ladder will be greater than your former. If you think it's bad now, God is getting ready to turn it around. God said, tell my people, if you think you are going through tough times now, he said, I'm getting ready to do a turnaround. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it been mentioned in the hearts of men what God is about to do. Church, can I get an amen? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Oh, only the redeem of the Lord can say so. We are in Haggai this morning. And we are in Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, it's no, it's no big, big uh, 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 scripture that you're not familiar with. It's very familiar. It talks about the latter or will be greater than the former. And we've heard this scripture so many times. But for the first time in a long time, I want to break it down a little bit for you, physically, but also spiritually, so that you can interpret where we are sitting prophetically as the church and what God wants to do in your life and through my life as the church of God in the latter days, in the days to come, in the end times to come, in a time like this that we are living in. Amen? Amen. Haggai is writing. He is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. And he's writing for the Israelites. And he's telling them what God has said concerning them. They have come through so much. The people of God came through so much. They have been in Egypt. They were delivered out by the great deliverer called Moses. While 40 years in the wilderness... They have come through the wilderness and the next generation has crossed over with Joshua. And while they are in Canaan, they have suffered because they, have not, they did not destroy all their enemies that they met in Canaan. So they live alongside their enemies and they became a spear and a thorn in their sides. And as they rebelled and they moved away from the things of God, captive became their answer. They began to become captives to kings and ungodly men and ungodly kings came and they ravished them and they took them in captivity. Here they are. Solomon has already built a temple but the temple is destroyed. My God, God prophesies to David. He said, David, there will forever be a man upon the throne. Ah, I will always cause your seed, your descendants to be upon the throne. Solomon will build my temple. Solomon comes. He builds a temple but my God, because of the people's ways, because of the people's spirit to always run back to idolatry, to always go back to high places, to always become disobedient and rebellious. Kings came from the north, kings came from the south, kings came from different places, and they ravished them. They broke their temples, they stole their holy things, they defiled the place, they took consecrated items, and they kept the people bonded. 
discouraged. Haggai is on the scene. And he has come to tell them in discouragement. The Lord says, has anybody seen the former house? He's telling them, have you seen the house Solomon built? Did you see the temple Solomon built? Oh, the ladder is going to be greater. Oh. Some people thought it was a house that somebody else was going to build. They thought it was a temple that a man would put together again. But what they didn't know, Haggai was prophesying that there would be a Jesus on the scene. And Jesus would come on the scene 2,000 years after. The ladder would be greater than the former. So Haggai is, is jerking their memory. He's He's trying to bring their memory back into their consciousness because God tells them, remind them of the former house. Remind them of all the great things they had in that temple when they walked in. The scripture tells us how much cubits of gold and how that place was built with measurements and everything to detail as God would have given the man of God. But with disobedience, and, and, and the hearts of the people moving away from God, they lost so much. Woo! And now they are discouraged. They've got no place to worship. Woo! They got no temple. They got no house. Haggai says in chapter one, don't you see why we got no temple? You build yourselves up. You build your homes up. You build your own homes up. But nobody's building the house of the Lord. I believe everything is prophetically for the time we're living in. Haggai is prophesying to the Israelites. But Jesus comes and he speaks the same thing to the modern day church. He says, can't you see why we got no place to worship? He says, Haggai says, the more you work, the more you don't have. The more you save, the more you don't have. The more clothes you put on, the more cold you are. The more food you eat, the more hungry you are. Because you have failed to build the house of the Lord. So after giving them a dread scolding, God says, speak to them in chapter 2, Haggai, and give them a reassurance that whatever they're seeing now, the ladder is going to be greater. Some of them are not going to live to see the ladder, but let them die with this note in their mind that the ladder will be greater than the former. Mm. We love to use this verse. For when we're going into new seasons, people love to use this verse because it makes them feel like a wealth of stuff is coming upon them. But I've come by to tell you, this verse is prophetically placed there for the church of God. It is put there for you and I to understand this is not a series in your life. This is about Jesus coming on the scene and giving us vision and mission. And the church must go into all the world, preaching the gospel. For the church has come. For Jesus has come. For the latter is greater than the former oh let me stick to my notes God is getting ready to major on your minor church and your ladder is going to be greater than your former Haggai tells the people of God I know you're discouraged but lift your head up God is going to rebuild this thing. Oh, God is going to build this thing over. I don't know how God is going to build this thing over, but God is about to build this thing over. The people of God was going through so much at that time. But Haggai, I encourage them. You see, I've come by to tell you today, church, God is in this to win this. And therefore, God has set uh, coming down through the line from Moses uh, to Joshua to Gideon to all the men of war. They were called the former. Oh, they were the former. But he said, greater is on the scene. Who is the greater? Oh, I come to inject something in you. Who is the greater? We are living in the time of the greater. We are living in the season of the greater. We are in the year of the greater. Greater works will you do. He said, I go to the Father, but greater is coming. Greater is on the scene. Paul is on the scene. Peter is on the scene. John is on the scene. Twelve disciples is on the scene. The house of the Lord would be greater in the latter than the former. Oh, Moses was great. Joshua was great. Gideon was great. Elijah was great. Ezekiel was great. But there is a John. 
we read in Matthew, there is a John in the New Testament. There is a Peter. That very shadow is raising men from the dead. He said, greater works will you do. Church, don't get stuck in an era. Church, don't get stuck in a wilderness. Church, don't get stuck in momentum. Church, don't get stuck in a season. It's time to get moving. You're unstoppable. You're on wheels. The God of Elijah, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob. They did not see you all today, but it was prophesied by all the prophets of old, from Daniel, oh my God, straight down to Malachi. He said in the last days, God will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. It was already prophesied that this would be the latter. The latter would be greater than the Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. The church is unmovable. If you're writing in your notes today, because I'm trying not to preach and I want to teach, but I got to tell you something, it excites me. It excites me to understand there is nothing a man can do to stop the church. There is nothing an imps or a demon can do to stop the church. The church was prophesied about. The scripture tells us in Isaiah that there is a man coming greater than I. Isaiah prophesied and he shall carry the government upon his shoulder. My God, Isaiah begins to prophesy. He said he will be called the Prince of Peace. I come by to tell your church you are unstoppable. Hey, no devil, no imps, no plan of the enemy can stop the church. You can stop the man, but you cannot stop the mission. Oh, shakalaba You may stop the man, but you cannot stop the mission. Demons tremble. They cannot stop the mission of God. You see, if God removes me today, he'll rise up another man to continue the mission. There is no way God stops the mission because the man is gone. Moses gone, the mission continued. Joshua gone, the mission continued. Caleb is gone, the mission continued. Gideon is gone, the mission continued. Nowhere in the Bible did the mission stop because great men fail, because great men fall. Hezekiah failed, God moved on. My God, my God, my God, there is no way. The mission is unstoppable. It was formed before we were here. It was spoken before we were conceived. God is unstoppable with his church. He's coming back for a bride. He's coming back for a bride. And his bride is unstoppable. What fire? What fire? Hey, church, what fire? You are unstoppable. You see, in Revelation chapter 2, uh, we learned of an unstoppable church. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 tells us about a church called Smyrna. The scripture said, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These are the words of him uh, who is the first and the last. You see, I am Alpha. I was there when Adam uh, was without bread. Uh, but my name, uh, my name, uh, Yahweh, blow bread into his life. Your hair, your hair, uh, I blow bread into his life. That's my name. Uh, and I I brought man out of the dust and when I blew bread into his body he became a living soul I've come by to tell you he said to Smyrna I am the first Jesus is revealing his identity he said I am the first I was there with the creator I was there with the Holy Trinity. I'm a part of the three in one. He said, and I am the last. I'm going to show up in Revelation. Like I showed up in Genesis. When the earth was without form. And they could see north me out of the darkness. He said, and I spoke, let there be. And there was. He said, just as I was in the beginning. So shall I be in the church. God is alive and well. Don't make nobody tell you. That God has abandoned his church. That God has abandoned his people. That God is nowhere to be found. He's ever present in the day of trouble. He says, who died and came to life again. He says in verse 9 to the church in Smyrna. He says, I know your afflictions and your poverty. Yet you are rich. And know about the slander 
of those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer, I tell you. The devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful. Or I come by to tell the church this morning, you are unstoppable. So become faithful. He says, be faithful. Even to the point of death, I will give you life as your victor's crown. We sing that song, you wear the victor's crown, for you have overcome. He said, in order to get the victor's crown, some of you are going to have to lose your life. You're going to have to lose your identity. You're going to have to lose your character. Oh, who do men say that I am? Oh, what they still say about you? When it becomes nothing good God takes over he said you're gonna have to lose some stuff you're gonna have to lose people saying you're a good person and start saying there she's a bad person he said that's okay I stored up for you the victor's crown hey I stored up for you a victor's crown I've, I, I've come by to understand I've ought to carry my cross with joy so I've learned to put on a smile I've learned to grow in this persecution because the cross I carry must be taken on with joy why why am I saved? Why am I still here? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Are you carrying your cross with joy? Ha. Oh, church, we are unstoppable. And we ought to understand this morning, this evening, wherever you are, that you've got to carry the, the, the cross, uh, the cross that God has given to you in this season with joy. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Oh, church, many are careful about their first death. And for this, they will do everything to live. But there is a second death that the scripture tells us in Revelation chapter 2. That even if you lose your life in the first life, he has promised you your second life. You see, the scripture tell me about a man called Stephen, the unstoppable church. Oh, Stephen one day was telling them about Moses. He was telling them about the Old Testament. And while he was telling them about the Old Testament, some of the men got offended. And why they get offended, they began to pick up stones to stone Stephen. The scripture said they stoned Stephen. But in killing Stephen, they couldn't stop the church. They couldn't stop the movement. Let me tell you something, church. In the last days, it's going to become vile. It's going to come dangerous. It's going to come dangerous to even open your mouth and speak. But I command you in the name of your speaker. You're going to have to speak. Stephen lost his life. Stephen lost his life. But the church was still unstoppable. Yeah, you may slay me, but the church is still on stoppable the mission is still on stoppable the vision is still on stoppable who God needs he will still rise up he said if I gotta raise up stones and rock I still raise them up the mission is on stoppable Woo! Then God brings me down to Acts chapter 4. He said, Joe, you want to see unstoppable movement? Come down to Acts chapter 4. For a matter of fact, back up, back up, back up. Back up to Acts chapter 3 and back up to Acts chapter 2. When the people of God was in the upper room and the spirit of God came down on Pentecost. My God, the unstoppable church was formed. The scripture tells us that Jesus had already died. And he has already risen. And when he came to them, he said to them, wait until power comes. The scripture tells us we come to Acts, the Acts of the Apostle, the unstoppable movement that has caused a revolution around the world until today. All those men are dead. All those men are gone. All those men are already sleeping, but here we are still, a thousand years after, still preaching the acts of the apostle, still talking about Paul and Silas, still talking about the prison, still talking about the songs they sang. Oh, when the chains fell off, when the prison got up suddenly, you can 
can kill the man, but you cannot stop the mission. Oh, that was T.D. Jake's uh, sermon some weeks ago that really blessed my head. Uh, you can stop the man, but you cannot stop the mission. You see, there is going to take more to stop the mission. When you come to stop the mission, you came to stop God. And when you come to stop God, God will bring out his wrath and fire because it was before the earth began. He set it in the poem. He set it in motion. He said, Adam, this is what it shall be. You shall be fruitful. You shall multiply. You shall have dominion over every living thing. Adam failed. Jesus Christ became our second Adam. He said, I'm going to make the latter greater than the... Woo! Adam didn't make it. But we're reading about Jesus, the second Adam. It seems like no matter where men fail, God picked up. No matter where men couldn't go, God went. No matter where men couldn't walk, God walked. No matter where men couldn't fly, God flew. No matter where men couldn't speak, God spoke. No matter where men couldn't do it, God did it. Hey, it is God's mission and he's coming back. I come to Acts chapter 4 after the day of Pentecost. Fire of God. My God, the Spirit of God comes down. The apostles, the disciples, they are there praying. Oh, they are waiting in the upper room. They are waiting for the power of God to come down and rest, 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 rest. My God, and the Spirit of God said in the scriptures that the Spirit of God came and they were filled. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to make utterances. Nima mama shanda. Oh, they start to make utterances in the realms of the spirit. They became unstoppable. They began to speak languages that they never knew about. They became unstoppable. Even the carnal men could not understand them any longer because they became unstoppable. Now God was able to move in and through them. I want to tell you about Acts chapter 4. Oh my God, verse 1 says, And the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John. While they were speaking to the people, they are already filled with the Holy Ghost. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to 5,000. Oh, you could chain me, you could throw me, you could pin me, you can jail me, 5,000, it's unstoppable. They thought to themselves, if they can contain Peter, if they could contain John, somehow, what they were bringing to the table would stop. But the scripture said Peter and John was in the prison. They were not able to speak as they used to, but still 5,000 was already saved. I've come by to tell you uh, that the spirit of the Lord is the one who saves, uh, and the spirit of the Lord is the one who redeems, uh, and the spirit of the Lord who caused dead men to live again. Uh, and when Jesus shows up on the scene uh, to dead men who become alive, uh, my God, it is unstoppable. That's why no other can have the foundational truth or the testimony. No other religion, no other religion can bring forth the testimony of the dead pings coming to life. My God, Lazarus is awakened. A dead man coming back to life because Jesus is using him as a prototype to show the church. Do you are dead? Do you had a stench? Do you were in a tomb? I said, roll it away. Come out. Lazarus, come out. Church, come out. There 
is a remnant that is arising in this season and they got no fear. They are determined to conquer. They are determined to run. They are like soldiers. They are ready. They are determined to run. They are determined to fight. They are determined to win. I don't know who you are. Maybe you're watching. You just tuned in. You felt like giving in the towel. You felt like quitting on the race. Oh, you are the unstoppable church. Somebody's depending on you. Somebody's depending on your voice. 5,000 is your message. Oh, Shama Katayaha. There is a 5,000 allocated to your crown. There is a 5,000 allocated to the stars on your crown. That when you get to heaven, you will wear a victor's crown. Who, who is like the Lord, strong and mighty. Though they slay me, yet will I trust him. Job said, though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust thee. Let me tell you something. Life may slay you, but trust God. I'm coming to bring this down for you. The God of faithfulness. Church, body of Christ, let me just remind you of something. Just like in Acts chapter 4, God is too committed to his church to leave it. I'm going to say it again. Maybe some hope is going from you because you see so many dying around you. God is too committed to the church to leave the church. He has gone through too much. He has been here so long. He has watched men stray, men come, men go. He has watched Noah in the ark. He has watched Noah's son. He has bring forth men when no one else was righteous. He has bring forth an, an, an Abraham that would bring forth 12 tribes. God is too committed to leave the church. Oh, all the stakes are in. It has cost God too much. Woo! God has put all on the line. Hey, war broke out in heaven. For you and I, God allowed one third of heaven to be lost. For you and I, God, it has cost God too much. All stakes are in. God is too committed to you to leave you. God said that to me this week. I woke up one morning. I woke up that morning. I was going into prayer. And I, I, I began to break down in the presence of the Lord. I began to cry. I began to hear the voice of God. You are too faithful to leave me. Hey. You are too committed to leave me. Hey. I, and I sat upon that. I said, God, the character of who you are, you are too faithful. If it was a man, I believe I was abandoned. But because of God's character, because of how he showed up for Paul and Silas, because of how he showed up for John, because of how he showed up for Peter, because of how he showed up for Moses, Joshua, you are too faithful, God. Hey. God is too committed to his church to leave now. He's too faithful to depart now. Church, I would like to inject in your spirit today that God is too faithful to leave you. They say, who are you? They say, what have you done? You are not well. You are not the best. You are not good enough. You are this, you are that. God said, and I am still committed not to leave you. Oh, shakalaba shanorobosa. He said, they, they, they said, what are you? You are not good enough. You are a fail leader. You are a fail. Oh, God said, and I'm still committed. I'm not leaving. They said, who are you? They said, who are you? You will not make it. They will die. Their ministry will die. They will not go further. They will not make it. God said, and I'm still committed. Oh, I heard his voice calling me. He said, I'm still committed. It's okay for people to leave you. 
It's okay for people to say all sorts of things about you. But I want you to be keen on one voice. The voice of God. And he's saying to tell you today, I'm too committed to leave you. I've come too far with you to turn back now. Let's finish this well. Paul said, I've run my course. I've done the race. And I've looked forward. Forgetting those things behind. And I press. Press. I don't care what you've been through. Not that I don't care honestly, but I don't care when it comes to the mission because God has more for you. He said, stop focusing on your former. It's time to put your eyes on the latter. You are the latter. Church, you. If Moses was the latter, Moses would have been here. Ah, oh, na, 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 na. If Joshua was the latter, Joshua would have been present today. If Elijah was the latter day prophet, Elijah would have been present today. If John the Baptist was the forerunner for the latter, he would have been present today. You are present. You are still present, true. You are still present, LaDonna. You are still present, Pastor D. It tells me there is a move that God is about to make that is unprecedented. There is a move that God is about to make that eyes have not seen. Because you are the latter hands of God. You are the latter hands of God. You are the people God has crafted and said you were born in 18 so and so. You will be born in 1980 so and so. You will be the children of the 80s. You will be the children of the 90s. You will be the children of the 20s. Oh, there is a children of the 20s. They are the latter. There is a church of the 20s. That is the latter. And it's going to take us through. Straight until revelation. Straight until he makes his appearance. And he comes again. Mm. Oh. Let's just cool down for a moment there. He's too faithful to abandon you, church. I'll tell you one reason why. Because you're the call of bride. You're the call of bride. You're at the altar and he's coming. He's coming. The character of God is he's too faithful to have you stand up by the altar alone. It doesn't matter. He's too faithful. He's going to come. Whether you've been good or bad, he's still going to come. He's still going to come up the aisle. He's still going to come up to the aisle. You know, he's still going to take your hands. Oh, I feel an anointing in this room. He's still going to take your hands. He is my father. You never leave me. You never forsake me. I may have to walk with a limp God. Hey. But you said no more crutches. So if you see my limp, oh, a year ago I preached that sermon. If you see my limp, hey, know that I gave up my crutches. Hey. I may gotta walk in my destiny like this. I may gotta walk in the prayer room like this. I may got to walk in intercessory like this. I may got to walk in the temple like this. I may got to walk in some rooms like this. But no matter what I'm doing, God, I'm coming still. I'm coming still, God, because you're too committed to leave me now. If you see my love, God, no I gave up. Where could I go? The psalmist David said, where can I go? Some of you are fortunate you can still run by company. You can still run by friends. You can still run by neighbors. You can still run by groups. Where can I go? I sat this week and I said, God, where can I go? 
But God, you're so committed. I cannot turn on you. You see, I've seen him when nobody showed up. I've seen him on my suicide moment. I've seen him. I remember at a tender age, I wanted to just end it all. But God said, I'm too committed to you to let you go. When I think back of the goodness of God, he's too committed to the church. He's too committed to you to leave you halfway. Maybe you're limping right now. Maybe the laugh is on you. But get to it. While Pastor D was worshiping this morning, I felt a pull. I saw in the realms of the spirit, the hands of God just like a fisherman pulling in his net. Ah, the hands of God was just pulling in. 5,000. There is a 5,000 that God is going to use you to pull in. Don't you dare walk out on God. He's too committed to you. God will never abandon you. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. But he promised, like he said to Haggai, tell them, you can remember the establishment of Solomon. If you see it, you can imagine the latter. That will be greater. Today, we don't have a Solomon's temple to look back at. What we have is patriots. Hebrew tells us, now we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Woo! What shall we now say? We look at Rahab in Hebrews. We look at we look at Abraham in Hebrews. We look at all the patriots that trusted God and the scripture said, though they did not see the latter, they believed. They did not see you. They did not see the latter church come to pass. But the scripture said, they walked as pilgrims on this earth, believing that their home was beyond this place. They died believing. The scripture said in Hebrews, and Abraham died full of faith. Wow. Abraham died full of the Latter-day Church. He died full of faith, knowing that you and I would finish the race. Knowing that his sons would do well. God is too committed. The Adamic nature may have failed, but the Christ nature will not fail. Adam was the former. Christ is the latter. We are living in the latter. He has already come, and he's already gone. And he says, I go to my father, but greater is coming. Because you and I, will do greater works. What it is that God cannot do? What it is he cannot turn around, church? You are unstoppable. You, the living, breathing, movable church, is unstoppable. My time. When I look at the scriptures, it takes me to one of my scriptures I have for you in Genesis chapter 41. Joseph, you know the story. But the story I'm bringing to you in Joseph, in Genesis, is just to tie to show you how God does not forget. The scripture says, and Joseph was thrown into prison from the palace. 
he was placed in the prison. But while he was in the prison, his gifts was in operation. He interpreted dreams. And the scripture said as he interpreted two people's dreams, a baker and a cupbearer, he said to the cupbearer and the baker, forget me not. Present my name to the king. Remind favor of who I am. Remind him I am in the dungeons. Oh, even in the prison, the church didn't stop. I believe that Joseph was a shadow of the church. His name, Joseph, means increase. The Hebrew word for Joseph is increase. He shall increase. Oh, oh, oh. the scripture said, and the apostles, uh, the, the, the work they did increased daily. Joseph was a shadow of the Latter-day Church. That you will be sold. You'll be thrown in pits. But every time you are left to die, there is an Elohim that comes on the scene. Church, come out. Church, come out. Church, come out. Look at this, look at this, look at this. The scripture said, and Joseph tells his brothers of the latter-day dream of what he shall become. They sold him. They threw him into sin. They said, we should kill you. One said, no, let's sell him. God shows up through servants. God shows up through Egypt. He takes him out of the pit. He sells him into slavery. He goes into Egypt, a bond man. But in his spirit, he's a loose man. Just like the Israelites. They've been captive for years like Daniel. But they are loose when they sit at kings. Let me tell you something. Joseph was a shadow of the church in the latter day. The scripture said, and he's serving well in the palace. But then he's thrown in the prison again. Seems like every time the church gets comfortable, Elohim shows up. And he puts us in some places that troubles our waters. But I've come by to tell you, even though you are troubled this morning, I've come by to tell you, you are still unstoppable no matter your location. Oh, the prison is now effective. He's bound, he's bound physically, but not spiritually. Even in the prison, his giftings is flowing. Prophetic is flowing. Talents is flowing. Lordship is flowing. Authority is flowing. Church, you can be sentenced. You can be put to death, but you will still live again. I come by to tell you it is unstoppable. While he's in the prison, he's prophesying. He's interpreting dreams. He looks contained, but he is not contained. The scripture says, he tell the cup bearer, remember me. The scripture tells us two years passed and the cup bearer did not remember him. And after the two years passed, he's remembered. Not because the cup bearer thought about him, but because God stirred the king's mind. You are in the prison. But God is stirring the king's mind. Hey, the cupbearer doesn't remember Joseph. God troubles the king. God speaks to the king in a dream. I prophesy to you that God is stirring the king's mind for you. God is stirring up the king's mind for you. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El Gibor. God is stirring up the king's mind for you. Jesus is stirring up the king's mind for you. That he will remember you and have need for you. The king needs Joseph because God has caused the water to become troubled so that a Joseph is needed. God is causing this world to become troubled so the church is, come on, so the church is, so the church is needed. Hey, God is turning up governments. God is turning up nations. God is turning up communities. God is turning up healthcare systems. God is turning it up. He's turning up the schools. He's turning up parenting. He's turning up the homes so that the homes would need Jesus. So that the church would know their rightful place. The government is on your shoulders. He's turning it up so that you can understand that there is a need for you. 
Joseph is a, is a, a typical shadow of the church. Why I can say that? Because he's the first we, he's the first with Daniel that we can talk about being thrown into a confined space, but seeing God showed up. But in the New Testament, God shows up with Paul and Silas, being thrown into the prison. But as they began to say, somebody's going to get saved today. Somebody's going to get somebody, 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 suddenly happened. Joseph is not the first to be in prison, and he won't be the last. Paul and Silas is in the prison. The church again finds themselves in the prison. Paul and Silas is in the prison because they deliver a girl who was under demonic influence. They are caught and thrown into prison because her masters can make no more profit off of her. But they began to sound somebody, 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 hey, the gift is began to flow in the prison. The church can be confined, but it will never be stopped. The church can be in box, but it will never be stopped. The church can be thrown into prison, but it will never be stopped. The church can be persecuted, but it can never be stopped. The church can be accused, but it can never be stopped. The church can be cursed, but it can never be stopped. What God has loosed, no man can bow. What God has blessed, no man can curse. We see a move of the Holy Ghost showing up with Paul and Silas. They are bound physically like Joseph, but they are free spiritually. God stirs up the mind of the king. He said, I have need for them. Church, you are so powerful that you must go through the fire. Our last minister last week said like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What fire? What pit? What prison? What palace? What accusation? Somebody, 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 somebody. Church, let us arise. God has turned up the economics around us. And it's going to get worse. He said in the end times, we can look forward to famine. We can look forward to pestilence. We can look forward to wars. Nations rising against nations. I want to tell you today, no matter where you end up, you are unstoppable. If you are the underground church, you are unstoppable. If you are the church above, you are still unstoppable. If you take the wings of the morning, you are still unstoppable. If you are in prison, you are still unstoppable. If you are confined, you are still unstoppable. As long as Jesus is on the inside, you are unstoppable. Preach that gospel. Preach that word. In season and out of season and see God make windows open for you. Today, church, let us come back to our first love. Let us come back. The ladder, and I'm not talking about a physical house. Don't get me tied up in this whole sermon. It's got nothing to do with building monuments. It's got nothing to build a church. This is nothing about building a physical church because many times we are in buildings and we are bound. I'm talking about building the ladder church, which is you and I, unstoppable in power, power, signs, miracles, and manifestations. It is unstoppable. Wherever you show up, where two and three agree, angels are accompanying. 
unstoppable. Stand with me. If you're in your home, stand with me. church, the call of bride, the ecclesia. I am a part of the body of Christ, a part of the church. I am not the church alone. I am part of the bride. Today when we come together, united, we are strong. United, we are undefeated. It is time, church. It is time, men and women of God, we arise. It's time we get our army position. It's time we put our minds in the right place. It's time we suit up. It's time we become battle ready. It's time we become war ready. It's time we become soldier ready. You are unstoppable. He said to the church in Revelation, you are faithful. Smyrna, you have done your best. But some of you will be put to death. He said, but don't be afraid. I'll give you the victor's crown. I do not know what the days ahead of us, nor the years ahead of us, church, may look like from now. I do not know what our tomorrow will look like from now. But one thing I know for sure in the word of God, that God will not be stopped in this mission. God will not be stalled in this mission. He said, I'm coming back for a bride, a remnant, a blood washed people. Let us make our lives ready that if tonight we should close our eyes, if today we shall go home, if we should die today, we can say, it is well with my soul. If I should close my eyes on this pilgrim journey, heaven is my home. What is your word today, church? Are you living under vanity? Are you living under money? Are you living on the cars and treasures? Are you living on the status and likes? Or are you living on the glory? Are you living on the power that is not from here? Are you living on to a heaven that you will call home one day? He said, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. He said, but I come again. I come again. Put aside the bureaucracy. Put aside all the political gains and wars. Put aside the wars. Put aside the rifts. Put aside the animosity. He's coming again. What will he say of you when he finds you? Let it be said that we were unstoppable. Let it be said we died unstoppable. Let it be said we sang unstoppable like the children who sang and wept by the rivers of Babylon Zion where is your song sing you may be confined by a Nebuchadnezzar but your song is freedom sing you are free maybe your life seems confined this morning sing you are free Maybe the things around you seem like it is in bondage. Sing, you are free. Maybe it didn't come out the way you planned. Sing, you are free. He is unstoppable in you. And he will get the mission done through you. You are important to God. And he's too committed to leave you. If you are a part of the unstoppable church, what is his name? Say that name. Shout that name. I want to pray with somebody. If 
if, you, if, if, if wherever you're standing now and you're saying, God, I'm in need of prayer. I'm a part of this army, God, but I've forgotten the mandate. I've, I've forgotten the mantle. I've thrown it down halfway, God, because so many things came at me. But God, I've heard this word. I'm a part of something bigger than me. I'm a part of something bigger than an island on a globe. Wow. I'm a part of heaven. Registration. I'm a part of heaven's registration. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. God, I want to return to you. If you are saying that, I want to pray with you. If you're the next step that you never accepted Jesus into your life and you said, I feel the need today to lead you into the repentance prayer, you want to give your life to Jesus, you have never given your life to Jesus, I want you to lift your hands and repeat with me that repentance prayer. We are going first. Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life. Father, I believe that your son Jesus Christ died for me. Come into my heart. Change my life. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Do your unstoppable work in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you can leave your name or, or get in contact with us or find yourself a Bible-believing church that's close to you and go to that pastor or that minister and give your life to Jesus and get water baptized and live for God. If you're recommitting, this is your time. Father, I surrender again. I recommit my life to you, God. I've strayed. Oh God, Lord, I've fallen far from where you've called me. But God, I've learned today that you're too committed to leave me. Coming back to my heart, God. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have said that prayer, walk today. I say like Jesus unto the woman at the well. Go and sin no more. Evangelize. Tell the world about Jesus. Come see a man. And the last batch, for those of you who have been given the call. Ah, yeah. You've been given a call. God has called you. You're on God's hotline. But you have refused to answer God's call snares and the traps and the cares of life has weighed you down. You have been giving God half and not all. Your ministry has been on pause. You feel like you are dying daily. You don't know if you will be able to breathe in a month's time again, spiritually. I've come to speak life back into you. I've come to speak life back into your mission. Run the course. Finish the race. Father, I pray for that man and that woman of God you have called, predestined, and you have placed their name in heavenly places. May they see your unstoppable power. May they be a reflection of who you are and a testament of your call. May they bring power wherever they show up your power. And may they, oh Lord God, finish this race strong. In Jesus' name. I pray that God has blessed you with this word. And church, as we continue this series, The Unstoppable Church, I want you to understand that God has given you the power. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. God bless you.